Kwa ngine kwa Rais Uhuru Kenyatta asubuhi hii amehudhuria kuhutubia kongamano la mazingira linaloendelea katika makao ya umoja wa mataifa huko Gigiri. Kongamano hilo limewaleta pamoja wana mazingira kutoka sehemu kadhaa ulimwenguni kuzungumzia njia mahsusi za kutunza mazingira na kuharamisha matumizi ya plastiki. The pursuit of prosperity was undertaken by nations without regard to environmental consequences. Few bothered to count the environmental costs. And even when they did, they went unheeded. Right across the world, we can now all see the consequences of that careless pollution of the past. And indeed, experts are predicting even more dire consequences if we do not act now. The world gathers here today because we have learned an expensive lesson. Unless our environmental riches are protected by all, there can be no lasting prosperity for any of us. We in Kenya have learned the lessons and have taken appropriate mitigating actions. And let me say a few words about what we in Kenya have done. As the executive director mentioned, some months ago, after three attempts, we managed to ban the manufacture, sale, or use of plastic carrier bags. The ban was backed by fairly severe measures, as one might expect, given the gravity of pollution by plastic in this region's land, air, water, and marine ecosystems. The ban may seem only a small step, but in fact, it has already cut plastic pollution substantially in Kenya. Equally important has been its positive effect on public opinion. What the ban has held is proof that we do not have to give in to pollution. Public action can make a difference. If citizens can work with their governments, to end such ubiquitous source of pollution, then they can move even on to bigger, more demanding targets. We now know that maintaining high levels of ambition in fighting pollution is achievable and is also a positive undertaking. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the many countries and organizations that sent us messages of support and encouragement in the pursuit of the ban on plastic carrier bags. We are proud of this achievement, and we hope that our example will also inspire other countries to do the same. My advice is that nations should not heed the skeptics who say that all countries cannot protect our planet better by banning plastic carrier bags. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now Kenya's intention to move on to another major anti-pollution project. Soon, we host the East African Framework Agreement on Air Pollution, building on the Nairobi Agreement of 2008. This agreement brought together 11 countries to develop actionable targets to address air pollution. In furthering the agreement on air pollution, we hope to repeat the success we have achieved in the ban of plastic carrier bags, and we look forward to global support in this effort. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to turn my attention to global multilateral issues. Earlier this year in June, all our countries attended the first ever United Nations Conference on Oceans in New York. Following this conference, we all came to better realize the pivotal importance of oceans and seas to our people, our planet, and indeed our prosperity. Oceans, we know, not only provide great value in maintaining life, sustaining climatic conditions for all of us, but also provide enormous value in the form of the blue economy that can be tapped to help accelerate economic growth and fight poverty 
in many of our nations. Today, therefore, I'd like to draw your attention to two important outcomes from Kenya's engagement in the United Nations Oceans Conference. First, Kenya has decided to bid for hosting the Second Oceans Conference in 2020. In doing so, we look forward to your support and participation in the conference. Second, the true value of the blue economy remains unrealized, especially by many developing countries. And therefore, building up to the Oceans Conference of 2020, to which I have just alluded, Kenya is looking into the possibility of hosting a global conference on the blue economy during the first quarter of next year, 2018. It is our intention to work with interested nations, as well as a special envoy on oceans of the Secretary General of the United Nations and United Nations organizations. And I would like to take this opportunity to extend an invitation to other nations and organizations to join us and co-host the conference in order to help us explore and maximize on the full potential of the blue economy in our world. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, even as we move to build and expand our work on oceans and the blue economy, our country, Kenya, will remain steadfast in its commitment to promoting its work on the forest economy. As you are all aware, next year, at the High Level Political Forum in New York, SDG 15 on forests and life on land will take center stage. Kenya, working closely with Brazil, China, and Norway, will build on the work started here at UNEA 3 to further deepen our commitment and work on forests and life on land for the betterment of the lives of all our people. Five years ago, in 2012, the world gathered in Brazil at the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development, during which it reaffirmed its commitment to the environment. In the outcome document, The Future We Want, the summit committed itself to strengthening the role of the United Nations Environmental Program as the leading global environmental authority. The United Nations Environmental Programme would set the global environment agenda, promote the coherent implementation of the, of the environmental dimension of sustainable development within the United Nations system, and it would also serve as an authoritative advocate for the global environment. Now, as then, Kenya remains fully committed to strengthening and supporting the United Nations Environmental Program to achieve this noble goal. ni Rais Uhuru Kenyatta hapo akiwa anazungumza mapema hii leo katika kongamano kuhusu mazingira katika eneo la Gigiri hapa jijini Nairobi kwenye makao makuu ya UN